welcome to our channel. We're back with another vlog. In case you forgot, I'm Bree. I'm Kayla. And I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy during this quarantine. So this is a continuation to our last vlog. To refresh your memory, the question that we focused on last time is what are the best preventive measures to take to deal with problem behavior? Um, some adults or children with autism usually show challenging behaviors. Some research that we have done and found is that 20% of 8-year-olds with ASD um, are involved with self-injurious behavior. So, we focused on like antecedents in our last vlog and we're going to focus on a type of antecedent. So, it's precursor behaviors, which is... It is the behavior that occurs right before the challenging behavior arises. And for example, some of the ones that we'll be looking at is finger biting, throwing objects, and vocalizations. Yes. So, um, who it affects? So, really, it just affects, like, that person with autism and the people around them in their environment. And the importance of this is that it can um, increase the quality of life for the individual with autism and for those that are around them, and it also promotes for a safer environment. Mm -hmm. uh, ram ramifications, if this problem is not solved, um, really it's just like that person that has autism will hurt themselves or others, um, and just being isolated from being able to be out in public or, you know, in, like, classroom with general populations, like, they'll be just isolated everywhere. And for benefits for solving this problem is you're going to be creating a better and safer environment for everyone, not only the child or the adult with autism, but those that are in the community, those that are in their daily lives. And also you want um, another benefit is that there will be no restriction on daily activities so they can go about their normal daily activities. The article that we are going to talk about focuses on precursor behaviors and the article is called Identification of Environmental Determinants of Behavior Disorders Through Functional Analysis of Precursor Behaviors by Smith and Churchill. So this study um, conducted a functional analysis for precursor behaviors that would occur right before the problem behavior occurred and the main goal of the study was to um, we want to reduce the problem behavior from occurring. Mm -hmm. uh, the types of precursor behavior that the article focused on with the four participants was screaming, falling, grabbing, crying, foot stomping, reaching, and vocalizations. For screaming, they defined screaming as any vocalization that emitted above normal conversational volume. So really anything above the volume that I'm speaking at currently. Um, grabbing, which is closing of the hand around any body part of another person. So, you know, grabbing the wrist, her shoulder, her neck, hair. anything. Yeah, yeah. any, um, as long as the uh, hand closes. And then for falling, falling is defined as moving from a standing or sitting position to the floor. So if you're sitting in a chair and you fall, so you're just standing up and then you fall to the floor, anything of that sort. Yeah, it's like the, um, throwing themselves pretty much. Yeah. Uh, crying was defined as audible whining at a volume exceeding of normal conversation. Um, so just, yeah, crying. You know. Whining. <laughs> yeah, it's not... And then for vocalization, they defined it as any audible vocal sound other than laughter. So, me talking, cussing is another vocalization, having conversation. And then reaching was defined as extending the arm towards another. So, so you know, trying to reach for someone or trying to reach for an reaching object for my glasses. to throw, like different things. Yeah, it could be towards somebody or an object or really anything. And then lastly, for foot stomping, it was defined as an audible contact between the bottom of the foot and any stationary object. So, hence the audible, so like it makes noise. And then, um, so whether that means your foot is hitting the ground, any type of other object, like maybe a toy, could be even a person or whatnot. Uh, so, the four conditions used during this FA were alone, attention, play, and demand. 
uh, but one participant did go through the condition of tangible. Yes, and then as a result, the outcomes of the analysis of the precursor behaviors showed a decrease in the risk to participants and even to caregivers, or both, or either or, um, from these dangerous behaviors, which is ultimately the goal that was wanted out of the article. For our conceptualization, um, the behavior definition that we created was um, based on precursor behaviors, which looks like finger biting, throwing objects, and vocalizations. Uh, you know, finger biting is just pretty much what, you know, it sounds like. You just grab your fingers, bite. It almost looks like nail biting, mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, and this, you know, it's kind of like a form of anxiety. So, you know, people who, just any, there's people who get anxious and they like to bite their hands. So, you know, that's what that looks like. Throwing um, an object, you know, whether that's just throwing an object into the air or whether that's throwing it at somebody it can really be either or or both i um, i've had you know clients in the past that when they're about to really you know show their challenging behaviors they start throwing um objects in the kitchen first so and any cups that are right there you know in reach of them plates uh right before you know they start getting aggressive as we mentioned i've had clients too where you know, maybe we're about to do, um, I'm about to demand an educational activity and they're not excited, like happy about it and they're going to get upset. So right before they perform this problem behavior, let's say we just had snack time or let's say we were just playing with a toy. They're going to grab that snack or they're going to grab that toy. They may throw that mirror. They may just throw it. But the object is that, the reason is that they're mm -hmm. going to throw the object before the problem behavior occurs. And, uh, well, vocalizations is, you know, any type of noise made other, noise. other than laughter, other right? Than laughter, so, well, we cussing, mentioned. yeah, we mentioned cussing. It can be high-pitched vocalizations, Screaming. whining, like grunting, so, um, you really know. Really a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then, which that then leads me to the mm -hmm. environmental events that are going to set this occasion for the problem behaviors. So, um, whether you are the caregiver, whether you are the therapist, or if you're just somebody in this client's daily lives, um, you want to have a very well-structured and educational environment that plays a really important role. You know, you don't want to have an inappropriate environment where... You're trying to do a learning activity, but yet, you know, you're, like, in the gym. Like, you're going to get distracted easily. Problem mm -hmm. behavior can occur easily. And then another really important factor is that you want to have high rates of reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So every client is going to be different. Some clients may love praise. Some may love food. working to go to the gym. Uh, yeah. Food, like chips, candy. Playing outside. Uh, some mm -hmm. Tickles. Oh, I have had clients where they love playing with Play-Doh, like mm -hmm. they could play with Play-Doh all day, so we will, and if that's what they love, you know, then okay, like, let's work to play with Play-Doh. Like, it'll make them get their work done, and, you know, it will decrease problem behavior mm -hmm. because they will want to play with that if it's preferred. Yeah, and, like, overall, um, you know, well, we feel like this article was, you know, best, like, the the procedures they did, like the results that came out, and we do think that focusing on precursor behaviors to help reduce challenging behaviors is a really good way to go, um, because all it is is just you know the per like if you're a therapist, it's your client, you analyze your client as you work with them, you start knowing what behaviors they're going to show before you know they start attacking you or hurting themselves or even as a caregiver uh, you know mm -hmm. you will be with the child on the daily to where you know you know okay right before we do this this is what happens and so you'll be yeah. able to catch on to it and be able to learn you know when is that right moment what is that exact instance that it is that they're going to engage in this problem behavior yeah but precursors definitely does work and we completely agree Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys um, enjoyed watching and learned something new. We will see you in our next video. Bye. Bye. So this is oh my god, I was like, <laughs> I felt like it got like so low. Oh my god. Last time. Oh. So. <laughs>
Rose. <laughs> <laughs>